Hey everybody, today we are going to be playing Hearthstone, and like usual, we're going to open up some packs here, about 20, see if we can get a legendary that we can build a deck around, and then play a game or two. And today I've got a good mix of cards, which is not good, not too bad, but yeah, we've got some classic, we got some Frozen Throne, which is the new ex expansion, and funny thing, really, really soon, the next expansion is going to be coming out, so right after this video, I'm going to start saving some gold for the next expansion, but we'll get to that once we get to that. So, nothing good so far, but like always, I'm hoping for a legendary that we can actually build a deck around. There's a lot of legendaries out there that either are just straight up terrible, or you they don't really, you can't build a deck around it, they're just a one of kind of thing. So, I guess we'll see, but it's okay, even if let's just somehow say I don't get anything. I can just take the dust and see if I can craft anything that we can build a deck around, you know? If no legendary, dust is always fine in my book. At this point, I think I'm... I think what I'm gonna try to collect dust for is the uh, Lich King. Just because that's used in so many decks that are popular at this point. It's a really just solid card overall. overall. It's kind of like the Dr. Boom of the old days. It's just, you play it. If you have nothing else to put, you play it. Which is kind of cool. Pretty much the only things you don't play it in is like aggro decks and I guess really, really like specialized decks, kind of like Quest Mage, but pretty much in everything else, you play it. Let's see if we get anything though. So far, it's been really, really bad. Maybe this, maybe the pack after this one. I'm feeling the uh, number four. Number four is my favorite number, if you guys didn't know that. I'm feeling this one. Okay, Prince Kalisath. Uh, you can 100% build something around that. It, it, there actually is specific decks built around that. So that's actually perfect. And of course, it came out of my pack. The number four, the best number that there is. So let's open this last one. And I think I'm going to build a nice Kalisath deck. We'll see, though. Alright, so, our first match against a mage. So, what I ended up making is a Prince uh, Kalisath Kazakis deck. So, it's like one of, one card of everything, or good things. And this is a very good opener. We got Kalisath right in the opener, which is crazy. If you guys don't know what the card does, basically, if you have no other two drops, it gives 1-1 one, one to every minion inside your deck. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to coin out Kalisath. Pretty much, this only saves me one minion with a 1-1, one, one, but this also helps me depending on what he plays. Because if you play something like Sorcerer's Apprentice that has 3-2, uh, something like my Firefly won't deal with it. Now, what I'm trying to do here doesn't really help me at this point because he plays a 2-1 instead of like a 3-2. So everything that I kind of just said doesn't really apply anymore, but it was a good thought, didn't work out, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, but it's okay, we still got two Fireflies on the board. Now the only problem is that he just played a Tar Creeper, which I can't really deal with. So at this point, I'm just going to play Acolyte of Pain because he has only one attack on his attack turn. So hopefully we'll get some draws. It's not likely that he'll attack it because he's probably not that dumb to just give me card draw. But right now it's on there. We'll see if we can do anything with it. So I guess we're going to play the really slow game. But I don't know. This could be really good or really bad because mages tend to get better as you let them gather cards. But at the same time... The more he lets me stay in peace, the more time I'm going to collect more minions with more 1-1. One, one, and the more easily I'm going to overwhelm him. Like, take a look at this. A 1-mana 4-3 and a 1-mana 2-4, that's busted. That's 2-mana for a 6-7. For 2-mana a for a 6-7. Uh, that's really good. I mean, I know there's some cards out there that could be equivalent to that. Like the 7-7 seven, seven Shaman card, but... Thank God that's out. Now let's see what we can do. He froze my entire board, and that stupid Tar Creeper still up. But, I mean, the Tar Creeper doesn't really do anything. I'll get rid of it this way so it doesn't screw with me. Next turn, it also gives me some health so I can keep tapping. Oh, Flying Strike. That's not good. But, 
that's actually fine. That gives me a better draw from the Acolyte of Pain. And I could just play more things, and I'm just gonna keep tapping. The Eater of Secrets. That's really good, I could eat that secret. The only problem is, I don't think that's a very tempo play. Because if I play the Eater of Secrets, I'll also have to play the Silence Minion, and that doesn't really help. And I need to get rid of that now. Uh, I don't really know. I guess we'll play for the mirror. Hopefully it doesn't copy it. It doesn't copy it. Okay, fine. That leaves it at, at one health, which is good because he'll be able to hero power it, bringing him down to seven mana, Being he'll be able to do less. Now, I'm really scared that that's Vaporize. Mm, that might be Vaporize, but I think I'll take a chance at it so I could get uh, my Deev out. Ugh, okay, that was Vaporize. The reason I wanted to get my Deev out really badly is so I can kind of pick up the pace a little bit. I'm letting him kind of stall for way too long. This way, I'll be able to play spells and minions, and these spells will also give me minions, which will let me flood the board a bit easier. Now, I'm not going to lie. past couple turns, I have had some misplays. Maybe I should have played the Eater of Secrets to get rid of that Vaporize. But at the same time, I, in the back of my mind, I kind of thought it was um, Ice Block, meaning I probably could have waited. I, I told myself I could probably wait a couple turns to get rid of that Ice Block so I could kind of get him closer to death before I do it. But it's fine. It doesn't really put me at that much of a disadvantage. Now, that is an amazing draw, or that's just an amazing luck for us because we can get rid of that very very easily with drain life that's pretty much perfect that would have been a really big threat on the board if we didn't have drain life now another tar creeper and the draw that we got that's not a 2-4 is not very good the only reason it's decent at all is just because that's taunt but at the same time he only has a tar creeper on board meaning he's not going to be able to do much damage anyway but I wonder what kind of mage this is. This is a very like awkward priest. Two tar creepers. Like he's not he's not quest mage. Doesn't look like he's giant mage. The only thing that I could think of is he could be like Exodia mage. And he just froze me again. So I don't know what he could be. At this point, I think I might just silence the tar creeper and then just get rid of it. I think that's the best option here because yeah I don't I don't think playing Blood Reaver Gul'dan will do anything and I do want to save the Eater of Secrets in case he plays an Ice Block which I, I don't know if he has an Ice Block but he hasn't played it yet that's for sure uh, okay that's a little bit bad he froze my board again but at the same time again the more he kills my stuff the bigger my Blood Reaver Gul'dan is and then the more he uses things like Blizzard and Flame Strike, the closer I get to him not having any thing for removal, which will help me out. And he's kind of already falling behind. Now this does help a bit. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of that Water Elemental, so it kind of doesn't bother me. I I'm not gonna lie that his deck is kind of terrible. I don't know what he's trying to do. So the reason this is kind of working is because he's his deck is just straight up bad. But, I mean, I guess it's whatever. Pretty much the concept here is I'm just trying to show off how Kalaseth works. You can kind of see. So, I'm just going to use Harrison Jones right away because mages don't play weapons at all. There's no reason for me to keep it in my hand. The only thing that he could use it for is if he has his own Medivh. And then I could obviously Harrison Jones that. But the chances of that happening aren't very high. I mean, he doesn't even have Ice Block apparently. And Cold Light Oracle... I don't really see how it would help him. I mean, I guess he had nothing in hand, but his only way of living right now is if he clears my board and doesn't let me draw anymore. At least from his perspective, that's how it should be. And then I don't get that either. At this point, if I were him, I'd be worrying on staying alive. I don't get why he would freeze the five attack, not the six attack. That's It's not that big of a deal. Like It's only one attack, but at this point, if I were him, I'd be a little bit worried. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about healing him at all, partly just because uh, I kind of need healing too, and I'm going to overwhelm him either way, especially with this uh, Blood Reaver Gul'dan right here. 
I'm gonna fill my board here with two six sixes and a taunt, another taunt. The only way he could pretty much kill me right now is if he had like fireball, fireball, frostbolt. But I think he's gonna give up. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and comment. I support my channel, and I'll see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.